So Apple, moving on to like <clears throat> your coaching, because mm. obviously you're a coach and obviously you do a bit of recruitment as well. What does an Apple team look like? So I know you got some, I know you do the, the academy stuff. Mm -hmm. I know you've got some things with the senior side as well. Mm -hmm. If someone's saying an Apple team, what does that look like? <clears throat> man, man cleared his throat on that one. <laughs> Boy, you know what? I think when when you if when you look at a club or a team that's been coached by me, I think you just have to look at me as a as as a, as a physical being to get an understanding what that football team is going to be. We're going to be full of character. We're going to be hard to beat. You're not gonna, you ain't gonna turn up and, and and turn us over. That's not that's not how this works. That's not how this works. We're gonna be a team full of character, and they're gonna be well, well drilled in how to deal with pressure. I like to create a high pressure environment because that's realistic to the game. They're gonna generally. I prefer technical players over athletic players because the game is played with your feet. Um, and I also understand it's a running game, but I think it's easier to teach someone how to run than it is to teach them how to kick a ball when you get to a certain age. You reckon you reckon you can make someone faster? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. I need to come, man. I'll be slow. <laughs> my... If it wasn't Absolutely. for my pace, I'd be a player. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, the thing is... I think it's different. I think you can find... I think it's easier to teach someone how to play football... Do you reckon? ...than give them genetic qualities, I think. Well, I think once you break down the mental barriers, and this is, this is, this is why I've got contrasting opinions of certain people, because their process of coaching isn't what mine is. I take a psychological approach to coaching. From the get-go, everything is psychological. If you're not mentally strong enough to be in my football team, you will not be in that team. You will not be in that team until you are mentally at a level where you can compete wearing a shirt that's got my name on it. And right. how do you manage that against an academy's mm. um, objective? So obviously you've not brought the players in, you're just... I say just coaching them, but you're coaching them. Mm. How do you, you, you just get, they just turn up, they mm, just turn yeah. up on your doorstep. So if you've got players that can't mentally handle the rigor mm. of your session, how do you, how do you make sure that they, they, they can? So whenever I see someone struggling, that's where I have to earn my money. That's, that's why they've got Apple Westcott in the building because that's, that's, that's my strength is problem solving. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a problem solver. If you've got a problem, I've got a solution. You know, and that's the kind of person that I am. That's not just what I do. That's who I am as a person. Anyone that comes to me with a problem, I'll give them a solution. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the greatest scenario and it's going to take you from zero to 100. It means that it's a solution. It's going to be a process, but let's do it together. Let's do it. If I need to hold your hand and we need to take five steps backwards first, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And I do not change my approach to coaching depending on the environment. I don't do it because that compromises who I am. If you've got Apple Westcott in your building, you've got me there because I'm good at this thing. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to do something else, you know? So again, if we step back into what does an Apple football team look like? I can guarantee you every player that is in that in that starting 11 and probably on that bench as well, every one of those players will be mentally resilient and they will be prepared for absolutely anything that is about to come anything that's going to take place in that football which they will be ready for ready for war they are ready to uh, listen to me I'm telling you <laughs> they will run through brick walls they'll die in that football pitch because what I like to do and this is and this do you know what it is I do this because this is what I had for myself as a as, 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 a, as a kid I create an environment where there's a sense of morality that governs your work rate. And that's a, that's a very difficult thing to do. Is that something that you can get into kids though? If, yes. if they come without it, they go, yes. you look at them, you go. With just, time. Yeah, yeah. With okay. time, yes, you can. Okay. With time. If you give me the time, I will take the laziest player in the group and I'll make him the grafter. But he, in order to do that, he has to feel love. He has to feel appreciation. He also has to feel inspired. I have to look at that person and understand what is it about that person that they're missing? What are they missing? Can I give them what they're missing? Mm. If I can't give them what they're missing, 
can I encourage someone else that can relate to them to give them what they're missing? And that's still me being a part of that process. Like, because I'm able to identify it, but I can also identify within myself, right? I can't do that, but maybe someone else can. I'm not afraid to, to look, I will always be what's necessary for a person. I'll always be what's necessary. And when I say- Do you go, think, do you, so we're talking about those necessi necessi necessities. Necessities, that's the one uh, for, that, for that individual. Do you think coaches are able to have that foresight to see that? No. <laughs> All right. Well, no then. Um, I'm just thinking because I'm, I'm listening to that. I'm thinking, yeah. If if you got X coming and you got mm. Y coming and then you got Z, Z coming and and you're thinking that person needs that. I can't give them that. I need to pass them on to Carl. That person needs that. I need to pass them on to somebody else. That's the person I can give them what mm -hmm. I know they need. Because I, I, and the reason why I probably agree with you to be honest mm. in regards to the no because I see environments where because that person has gaps mm -hmm. in whatever it is, personality. Um, they throw them on the scrap heap. They do. They just go, listen, you're not quite for us. You don't fit, fit our philosophy. When I think, well, that's the reason why they've, they've come because they've got some sort of attribute mm -hmm. or some sort of <coughs> ability to mm -hmm. them. But you don't want to work with them and give them the other little bits that's going to help them um, reach their potential so what do we do or where do we go with coaches to help them understand that uh, I mean yeah you've got the courses but but, mm. but really in practical where do we go with those kids that yeah they get thrown on the scrap beat because do you know what we always talk about and we'll probably lean into it about this whole behavior thing that really it it grinds on me the whole mm. behavior when same when c coaches go oh they're badly behaved they're not a good player I'm like, what? yeah because they're not a good. It just it it it, it, it 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 doesn't sit with me right because they think behavior and their footballing ability sit hand in hand. Where I don't think it does really. Do you know what I mean? So um, how do we help those coaches? What, what what do they need to do? You have to send them. You have to send them away to go and live. Yeah. You have to go and show them poverty. Go and show them wealth. Go and show them middle class, go and show them all these things. Go and, they need to go and see the world and go and experience life and people in different scenarios. Because what I find is that many coaches in the academy environment, they've got loads of aspirations and they are governed by their aspirations as opposed to what they need to do in that moment. Mm. Um, so they don't spend the time nurturing the way that they're supposed to nurture. When I, you see, here's the thing, listen, I'm a parent. So when someone tells me nurture, I take that very literal. Mm. Treat that person like that's my child. Yeah, 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 Because that's what nurture means to me. I can't do something unless my heart is in it. Mm. So if I'm if I'm coaching a group, if I'm coaching people, my heart is going to be in it. If that kid doesn't like me, I couldn't care less. Yeah. I'm by the time we're done, that boy will be sending me Christmas cards telling me thank you. Yeah, so <laughs> like that's just my mindset. It reminds me. It reminds me <laughs> um, when I speak to my son and he says, "You're not my mate. I'm not your mate." I'm like, "I'm not here to be your mate. Am mm -hmm. I? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm here to be your yeah. dad." Yeah. So yeah, I do <clears throat> understand. Totally understand that in regards to that whole nurturing process and what mm -hmm. that means and what you have to sacrifice as a yeah. person. You can't, you can't be their friend. You know, yeah. I mean? you're there to pay them a service, which is, which is, which is interesting. The so thing is, the the way that the dynamic is set up between us, and we are so lucky as coaches, we've got the perfect dynamic. We've got the perfect dynamic, because kids don't always listen to their parents, and even the ones that do listen to their parents still listen to their coach. 100%. So it's one of those things that we've got a completely different angle. So when we step into these, these people's lives, we have the keys to their passion. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that we use it to manipulate them, but we use it to drive them. Mm -hmm. We don't dangle it as a carrot. We put it inside their hearts mm -hmm. and use that as energy, use that as fuel. The same way we put that fuel into a car, we must put that fuel into their engine and say, listen, this is, this is what you want to achieve. I'm not gonna dangle it in front of you, Instead, I'm actually going to put that inside you and say, listen, you've got this. Mm. I'm, I'm here to help you with this process. If it doesn't work out at the other end, nothing to worry about. You've, you, you, know, you've, you've, you can walk away from this knowing that you've done everything possible mm. to achieve your, your goal. Yeah, yeah. Very um, and, you know, 
like I said, I, I take that, that psychological approach. Um, but I, do you know what? I call it psychological, but it isn't psychological. It's emotional. Mm. That's what it is. It's emotional. Which could be deemed to be part of the psyche. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's, it's specific. It's, 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 it's emotional. Mm. Because it, once I get my hands on you as a person, once I, once I love you and I wrap my energy around you, there's only one way this is going to end. <laughs> It's going to end the way that it's supposed to. Crush bones. Listen. <laughs> it's only going to end it's only going to end with you achieving what you started with cuz I'm not going to let you fail. The only way that this this process is going to come to an end is if someone that is my senior comes in and says Apple I'm really sorry but we've made a decision. Mm. And that breaks my heart. Mm. I feel like I'm going for a breakup when that happens. Yeah, 100%. So how, like- how, how do you deal with it, Apple? So how do I deal with it? Your 16s now you're working with someone who got real good potential mm. duh, 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 duh. you've worked and you're you know someone above says look the decision's been made you know we're gonna have to release him it's uh, what well, it's, it's happened it's happened quite recently mm. like you know it's it's not an easy thing to go through it look when you turn up to work every day and you see the same people every single day you become accustomed to just having them there you know and for some people it's easy come, easy go, because they're they're laser beam focused on what they want to do as opposed to really being there f- there to for the environment, you know. Um, for me, I take it personal. I take it personal, and I do. I ask questions. I go and ask questions, even though the decision's been made. I don't go and pester people, but I'll ask questions. Boss, what was that about? What's going on there? Oh well, we just feel that is this 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 that. This, that. And then I'll say, I, I'll try to cha- not, not challenge him to make him change his mind because once a decision has been made, it's been made. But I'll ask questions that make them feel uncomfortable and make them think about it. So the next time mm. they are a little less quick on the trigger mm. and they're a little bit more, you know what? Let's, get, let's, let's, extend him. let's extend him another eight weeks. Let's give him some time because the, if I've only had a short period of time to work with someone and I'm actually seeing improvement. I've got a good, I've got a good excuse or a good reason to go to my boss and say, listen, look, he's, he was here. Now he's here. Let's not release him for a reason we didn't sign him for. We signed him for this and we're releasing him for that. Let's, can we just ignore that for a sec? Let's look at that quality. Let me try to get more of that quality out of him. Mm. Like I've already done this. Just give me time. Let me do my job. Give me some time. Give like, me some time. You've got me in this is that, building is that for something a that happens in football, though? Do they? Do they? Do they go? All right, go on, oh, man. Give him. Give him. Give him another four weeks. Go on, give me Apple. Go on, give me. Give him, go on, go on, Apps. Give him eight. But you know, listen, and do you know what? Here's the thing. We're so precious about this academy environment, but what are we precious about? Because it's not. It's not as elite as people think it is. Mm. It's not because. Don't the, you, are you saying it as in category? I'll say maybe category two down, or is it you saying it that? No, the whole academy system. Yeah. There are players in Cap One that shouldn't be in academy systems at all. And that's, it's the same for players in, in all ca- categories. And when I say they shouldn't be there, I'm talking about both personality and I'm talking about ability. Mm. But with the personality aspect, they need help. They shouldn't be in that environment until they are adjusted as a person, they need to be, uh, they need to be on a level where they can go into an environment and understand the severity of where they are. Too many of these can they kids learn are, within that environment, though. No, the, the, the thing is, is that they don't have the personality, they don't have the mentality to learn within that environment, which is why they don't progress. When you say personality, what do you mean by personality? <sighs> um, because personality and mentality. Yeah, two different things. different things. Yeah, two completely different things. I have children that don't have the mental... Like, what, yeah, what, what's a personality? What personality does someone need to, to, to be in academy football? Well, you need to be receptive. You, you need to be... I'm not going to say you have to be an open book, but you have to be receptive. You have to understand that you're in this particular space in your life for a particular reason, and a lot of them don't understand that. For some of the players they have an awful lot given to them. So when they walk in the door and things are not being given to them, it's nothing but petulance we're seeing. We see a lot of petulance. We see a lot of stropping. We see a lot of arms thrown around and a lot of complaining. And that 
that in itself is a big, big problem when you're trying to control a group of 20, 20, 20 people or 16 people. So that, that is go on, are you going to go where I'm going? No, I don't know. I don't know where we're going. You go first. <laughs> so all I was going to go, that is, hey, oh my God, my throat, behaviour. Mm -hmm. And dealing with bad behaviour and dealing with, maybe not even bad behaviour, challenge behaviour. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go, Carl? As well as, yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got another bit. Yeah, so in terms of like dealing mm -hmm. with challenging behaviour, so we've got somebody now that is showing petulance mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe you may think they're not ready for the environment. Mm -hmm. Or you may have seen some boys that their behaviour just not deemed acceptable for the environment. Mm -hmm. What is your take on that? So this is something that really grinds me. It, this it really really grinds me. It's like so Carlin as well, Carlin wants to fight people. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> so look, I believe if someone's in that environment, they are now your responsibility. It's my responsibility. My, it's my responsibility to keep them there. And don't get me wrong, that person has to want to be in the environment. They have to want to evolve. They have to want to develop. They have to want to change. But sometimes they want it. They just don't know that they want it. And you kind of have to show them that they want to be there. So everything, I, everything I've just said is coming from the standpoint of understanding how people become what they are, what you see. How do they become what you see? So I understand the process of where we see petulance. I understand why we see aggression. I understand why we see uh, poor work ethic or what we see as poor work ethic, but how we see somebody not working as hard as someone else, how we see people not understanding the game. I understand that process because I've lived, I've seen, I've seen life. I've seen people come from less. I've seen people come from more. I've seen people have absolutely nothing not even a shoe on their foot, you know? And I understand the psychology when they walk into an environment where everything is so proper. Talk about the staff that don't. The staff that, you know, it'd be lovely if we can have, you know, 20 Apple Westcots in the building, you know, I mean, it's only you one and you're gonna see loads of things at other than clubs. What about the staff that don't? What, what are your thoughts on like, just behavior, behavior management? And what, could, what information can you impart on other people maybe listening to this mm. to help them deal with challenging behavior just empathy man look we're we're human beings we're we're look, we're all on this vessel moving at a million miles an hour swirling through the universe like but we can't leave we're all here so why are we why, why are we complaining about things that we can actually change we can we can modify the if we if we if we're looking at someone and we're saying that's not good enough why are we not trying to change it? Because that's the that's supposed to be what the environment is, right? Because instead, what we see is we see some lead phases or some coaches, some academy managers, heads of recruitment. They look at these people, not as players. They see them as numbers. Yeah, well, feel, you know, we'll keep them here for two more years because, well, they've got academy experience. Don't want to bring anybody in from the outside. We'll keep them there for now. But they know from two years before they're letting you go. They know from five years before you're not getting a scholar. They know that. Ah, oh, well, he strops, he walks around, he does this, that, and the other, and I don't even worry about it. We'll put our energy into that one. So do you think the academy system then needs scrapping? Yes. What's the, what's the, what, what do we do I, instead? I can't even jump there. You see him? <laughs> 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 he's, he's, he's <laughs> yes. scared, I'm scared. It's, it's not fit for purpose. Yeah. yeah. The reason why it's not fit for purpose has got absolutely nothing to do with development because we're seeing world-class talents being developed, being nurtured. We are seeing that. Mm. But why are there not more?